our new Expression Australia CEO. She will be informing us of all the exciting things that are occurring at Expression Australia. She will cover off on certain programs and projects that the teams have been working on as well. We'll also have Sam Cartledge join us on screen and he will talk to a particular project that's focusing on the employment sector. We also have Ramis McRae and Natasha Ravlich joining us this evening. They will both be interviewed on a project they were recently involved in. So before we move on, I'd like to introduce Nikki Long, our CEO. She has been on board with Expression Australia for the past four months. So join us online, Nikki. Thank you, Olivia, and hi, everyone. So nice to join you this evening, and thank you for tuning in to our live Facebook. Uh, I really am excited to be uh, interacting with you tonight. I would much rather be in person, of course, and we do have some events coming up um, where I hope we get to meet personally. As Libby said, I joined in November and since then I've had uh, the honour and privilege to be meeting with a number of people in the deaf and hard of hearing communities. I have been in contact with and um, speaking with CEOs of other deaf societies and a number of groups such as Deaf Victoria, Deaf Sports Australia, and uh, also um, recently with some smaller community groups. And I'm just so struck by the passion and the vibrancy of this community. And I look forward to very much being a part of it into the future. But I have to say, I'm also very struck by how welcoming and friendly everyone has been willing to help, willing to impart so much history and information and um, educate me on deaf culture and language. And I really thank you in advance for your patience with my signing. I am learning, I'm, I'm learning signing slowly and I'm trying my best. Uh, so I really um, hope next time we catch up that bit by bit my sign language um, is improving. Last month I was down in Tasmania and I was um, really fortunate to join two major community events. We had a Saturday night event and a Sunday barbecue where many families uh, came and joined the Expression Australia team down there who put on a fantastic social opportunity and a, a, an opportunity to connect for the first time in some time. I really hope that we can do that here in Victoria, um, not only with the event at the museum coming up, which I'll talk about shortly, but with some other events that we've got planned later in the year. So um, before um, I, I hand over to Sam, I also wanted to encourage any questions tonight. I know some of you have sent them in advance, but uh, to please uh, post your questions on Facebook. And if we don't get to them today, I will um, commit to ensuring that I provide answers moving forward. So handing over to Sam, uh, who will tell us more about a fantastic project our teams have been working on called I Am Deaf. Thank you, Nikki. As Nikki said tonight, um, we're going to be talking to you about a really exciting project, which is called I Am Deaf. It's a marketing campaign, and the aim is really to encourage business owners to provide employment to people that are deaf or hard of hearing. So 12 months ago, we received some funding through the NDIS under their ILS grant to do a marketing campaign. The purpose of that is looking at a co-design project with deaf and hard of hearing people and consultants. And we considered the experiences and barriers that deaf and hard of hearing people face when going out into open employment. 
and looking for employment. So with that knowledge, we created five stories and videos of different types of employment and businesses. We recruited deaf actors, deaf talent, to be able to take on those roles. The first role was a community worker. The second one was as a courier. The third role was as a visual merchandiser. The fourth role was as a hairdresser. And the last one was as a cleaner. So we'd like to show you two of the videos that we created this evening. Now, just be aware um, that the videos may be a little laggy because we're on Zoom this evening, but we're incredibly proud of what we've been able to produce and we would like to share them with you anyway. So after this evening, you'll be able to watch the videos again on our website. Please make sure that uh, you enjoy watching them. So without further ado, we will show you uh, two videos now. One is of a hairdresser. And the other one is as a community support worker. Three hundred seven eight zero double two five. Hi, my name's Natasha, and I love my job as a support worker. I support children with disabilities as well as their families. I support a variety of clients. One of those is a young girl who is deaf and has cerebral palsy. I support her to shower and dress herself independently, as well as supporting her with her schooling. I support her to communicate with her teachers. Sometimes if there's a misunderstanding, I might use gesture or finger spelling, or as an alternative, I might draw a picture until the concept's understood. We had a Zoom lesson online about temperature. The student was quite confused. So I then decided to draw a fridge and indicated through Auslan that it would be cold. And then I drew an oven and indicated heat. I showed her a picture of temperature rising and falling. Once that concept was understood, we got through the lesson really quickly. The best part of my job would be imparting my knowledge and skills to enable the children to become more independent in the future. I'm a great communicator, and I'm deaf. Deaf works. Call 1300-780-225. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching those videos. So the videos will be on our website. 
we'll be sharing our links on our Facebook page as well after this evening. The videos will also be on Catch Up TV and we'll be targeting businesses in the community. And it's not just in Victoria, it's, it's nationally. So this marketing is about really promoting deaf talent, deaf ability, deaf skills within the community. And the feedback we've received to date has been really powerful. So this is a start. We're going to be asking work, workplaces to work with much of our deaf talent in the community. So if you're seeking work, please sign up with Expression Australia. Have a look at our website, jobs at expression.com.au is the website. We've created some wonderful resources for business owners. They're also available on our website now. So I want to take the opportunity now to have a discussion with two of our deaf talent that were part of creating these resources. So we have Ramus McRae and we have Natasha Rablich. I'd like to invite my work colleague, Nicholas Steer, to facilitate this conversation with Ramus and Natasha and their feelings and experiences of creating the resources that you've just seen. Thank you. Over to you, Nicholas. Thank you, Sam. Wow, they were fantastic videos and I really did enjoy watching uh, the videos and to see that those deaf actors there on screen. So now I'd like to invite uh, Natasha Ravlich and Ramis McRae. So Natasha and Ramis can come up to have a discussion and share with us their experiences of uh, the filming process for those videos. Hello, how are you both? Yeah, really well, thank you. That's good. So I have a few questions to ask both of you, just a few. So I'll start firstly with Natasha, the first question's for you. So you typically work as a community support worker in various settings. So with that video, it was in fact based on your own experience. Could you tell us a little bit more about your experience of making that video and what does the campaign mean for you personally? I think my experience in creating the video is a really interesting journey, actually. There were some things that I hadn't thought about the value of my experiences to be able to share that with the community. At the same time, being able to show that I'd been able to achieve. It's about utilising the same language and the same communication in the role of a support worker. And I think that's a really nice way of being able to demonstrate what it is that I do and the value that I actually bring to the work that I do. And I think people don't quite realise that and they don't realise the impact that I could have on, on children and also adults in the role as a support worker. In promoting my role, I think now when we think about the NDIS and the NDIS rollout, there are many parents out there, many families that could consider um, support for their deaf children and it's providing them with different resources, thinking about their children and how we can encourage them to become independent and that they can achieve. That's so also partly me being a role model for those families as well. I think it's really important for to be able to motivate the clients that I work with and that's part of it as well. So that's part of my journey in creating the video. Yeah, I think it's also good also to step back and consider what impact your work has on the wider community. So I think um, absolutely it's fantastic. So next I'd like to ask a question for Ramis. Are you an actual hairdresser, Ramis? Well, I have a number of different skills. I've worn a lot of different hats over the years. Yeah, so with this video, you've obviously brought on, been brought on board to act as a hairdresser. Can you tell us a little bit more about your experience in regards to the film 
the filming of this and what the experience was like to be part of the process? Yeah, sure, Nicholas. Um, it's been great to have the opportunity as an actor from time to time. And I think really being involved and taking on a character and the characterization really interests me, thinking about the set and so on. And I think it's a huge process to undertake as an actor. I know on the day, um, I mean, they, show, they showed you the video, but uh, there was a lot of setup work and a lot of preparation. You only see really the end of it, um, the fruits of our labour, but uh, it was just wonderful. And, and the creativity that went into creating something like this, and it's not just pointing a camera in one direction, it's the different angles and all the nuances that are involved in, in creating a piece like this. And I really did enjoy it for that reason. Fantastic. Yeah, it was really interesting to see you as a hairdresser because you actually looked like you could be a hairdresser, Rana. Yeah, I usually go to the same barber and uh, I think, you know, if I was acting, I would take on the characteristics of my barber. And uh, it's great to see that I obviously uh, convince you, Nicholas, if you thought maybe that I should set up a, a, uh, a barber business on the side if you're thinking that I have potential in doing that. I mean, if you're interested. Yes. Well, you know, you can be my first customer. How about that? <laughs> so I'd just like to pose this next question to both of you. Have you both or either of you ever experienced barriers in gaining employment and how did you overcome those barriers? And Natasha, did you want to take this one first? Hmm, where to start? I suppose in general, the barriers that I might have faced. Hmm. That's right. So just generally as a deaf person, any barriers you may have faced? For me, the barriers that I faced is I suppose the wider community are quite fearful when they meet a deaf person. They don't need to have that fear. Um, there's different ways of communicating with us, using mime, using gesture, even pen and paper. It's not something to be fearful of. I suppose if there are any barriers that I do face in life, I try lots of different things to be able to overcome those barriers. Um, I suppose the role that I, uh, in the role of a support worker, it's about communication. And so if I go with this young person to different appointments and, and I do experience a barrier, it's interesting. I'm having to communicate with another person and communicate with the child. So, you know, I don't want necessarily extra staff there uh, with me. So it can be frustrating, but it's also thinking of other ways of communicating, even you short messaging on my phone to communicate, like I said before, um, with gesture and mime. I don't want to have to have another third person there like an interpreter. I want to be independent. So I suppose my experiences are that, yes, from time to time, yes, I do experience barriers. But at the same time, I think people are becoming more accepting of diversity and really consider what it is, what does it really mean to communicate with people? So I think the community has actually changed, even in the last 10, 20 years. The reluctance isn't there as much. And I would like to see other people achieve what I've been able to achieve um, because there's really a domino effect that takes place. Having one deaf person be able to achieve and overcome barriers, other people see that and they can also overcome their barriers. Ramis, have you had a similar experience that you'd like to share? Yes, I've experienced a lot of barriers in my life. Um, and, I, and it's about, about developing skills really to overcome those barriers. I used to work in a hotel as a cleaner. People used to be quite surprised when I'd say that. And so I would work with another staff member who wasn't deaf and we'd be cleaning the hotel rooms. And that particular time I was pretty keen to uh, be financially independent. And I remember the staff member I worked with was very slow and wasn't as attentive to his work, whereas I got things done very, very quickly. And 
And we were always paid depending on the amount of rooms we were able to clean. And I was able to get through so many more than my counterpart. Sometimes when we get to a room, we knock on the door and see whether the people had left. Sometimes they'd left, sometimes they hadn't. If they hadn't left, I would have to communicate with the person that was still in the room. Um, but it's about having a positive attitude. And really, I was able to prove myself in the time that I was there. And I had a lot of successes and I suppose a lot of those barriers were overcome. It really comes down to attitude, attitude of others and attitude of myself as well to show that I'm able to do things. I think that's really important to show our capacity, our capability, and we work perhaps in, in different ways. For example, I worked in a factory at one point, peeling onions. <laughs> and I thought, oh, well, this, you know, it's a means to an end in the end. And, and I remember the manager thinking, oh, well, you're deaf. And it's like, well, I can peel onions as best as anyone else. And so they took me on board and, and I suppose they could see there was an advantage with me doing the work because I wasn't distracted by people that were perhaps having conversations around me. I just came in, did the work and left. So again, it's about attitude to show that I can be of benefit to an employer. Even things like being a forklift driver, people say, well, you can't be a forklift driver because you can't hear the sounds behind you. But deaf people, as we know, have incredible peripheral vision. That skill has been really honed because we are deaf. So there's lots of different ways of overcoming barriers. It shouldn't be a setback, shouldn't stop you. And yes, there will always be from time to time difficulties that we may face, but it's about showing that we can achieve in the workplace. Could yeah, I just I add too, if you don't mind, it's about showing the wider community that I am employable and I have something to contribute. It is about attitude and it's about showing people that I can also do the task that they want me to do. They're both brilliant answers and that kind of actually ties into my next question. So with the campaign, it's been targeted at employers, people who own a business or people who are responsible with employing new staff and trying to raise their awareness on uh, hard of hearing and deaf people in the community who have the skills to work in particular roles. So do you have any particular advice for deaf people, uh, for employers who are looking to uh, employ deaf staff? As I said before, deaf people are wonderful at being able to concentrate on the task. They don't get distracted because usually the work environment they're in, there are people that are not using sign language, people are using a spoken language and they're not distracted by that. There's a lot of jobs I've had in the past where you may have people that have um, lots of academic qualifications, but that shouldn't be a put off if you don't have that. What you're trying to demonstrate is that you have the skills to be able to do the task. And I think that you can be of great benefit to their business as well. So it goes, goes both ways. I'd have to agree with Ramos and what he's just said, totally in agreement. Being able to concentrate on the task at hand, be able to get the job done in a timely manner. The other benefit is we know that the community is very small. So if an employer employs one deaf person and that deaf person is really successful in being able to do the work really well, then hopefully they will be more welcoming of other deaf staff as well. It's not just about me. It's about benefiting the community as a whole and also improving uh, the employer's business as well. So there's a lot of flow on effects. As I said before, I've worked in a lot of different businesses and in diverse roles. And often they will, if they've just got one deaf person that works really well uh, in a particular business, often the employer will be convinced to then employ other deaf people. So I totally agree with you, Natasha. It's not just about the individual. It actually does benefit the community and it also benefits the employer and their business. Yeah, brilliant. So I have one more last question for you both. So what advice would you give to other deaf and hard of hearing people who are seeking work? Any particular advice in regards to their journey and their seeking employment? Natasha? 
Ramis, I think it's over to you. It's about motivation, being motivated, being passionate. It's about having a good attitude, a can-do attitude, being willing. And I think it's about convincing the wider community that you can do a variety of different tasks. For example, you know that deaf people can't perhaps become soldiers, but there's other ways of being involved in the armed forces. You don't necessarily need to be on the front line. You can be a civilian, okay? So there's lots of other ways of getting around some of the inhibiting factors that I suppose the employers may perceive if they're going to employ a deaf person. I agree. It's, it's also about that determination. And there's plenty of support out there now for, for those of us that are deaf. It's about finding workarounds, asking others other ways of getting around any barriers that, that may confront us. As Ramos has already said, you know, you may want to be involved in the armed forces and in the military, but there's other ways of doing that. It may be as a civilian, it may not be on the front line. Okay. And it's, and it's also about the importance of not being passive. It's about a go get them attitude, can do attitude that you're able to do a particular task or a particular role. And I know that sometimes, I suppose, being deaf, there's that hesitancy, there's that feeling of, can I really do this because I'm deaf? It's about taking one step after the other and try, giving it a go. And know that you can do a lot of different tasks and a lot of different roles. And I think it's also important that deaf people do have the ability to be promoted as well. It's about teamwork. It's about communication. It's about learning from one another. And so achieving your goal, you don't have, it's not a journey on, a, on one road. There are many different roads, many different paths to be able to achieve what it is that ultimately you want to achieve. It's about managing teams. It's about commitment. It's about looking at one's strengths and weaknesses. And it will take some time to be able to identify those things so that you can take the right path. And I know that when I moved from Europe out to Australia, the first job I did was as a kitchen hand. And I saw an advertisement and it was in an Asian restaurant. So I just went in basically cold calling and asked for the job. I didn't have a resume. I didn't have any qualifications at all, but I was able to convince them that I could do the task that they wanted the kitchen hand to do. And that was really a road into um, being able to get other roles later on. And it was by using gesture too to communicate with them. You know, you have to start somewhere. Sometimes you have to start at the bottom. It's about the development of skills and really developing those skills and broadening what your options may be. It's about meeting others as well. It's about word of mouth to be able to find different roles, different uh, employment out there in the community. And it's about networking and your ability to be able to network effectively. That's brilliant. And I fully agree with everything that you said there. And Natasha, I agree. You have to start slow and start at the bottom and you have to really work your way up. You have to develop your skills. It's also about building up yourself. So as if you're walking down a slope, it's very easy to fall down quickly. So if you go nice and slow, you'll stay steady throughout. So likewise, when you're seeking employment, I think if you try and step ahead too quickly, you're more prone to falling down. So as you're looking for work, I think starting off small and starting off slow, whether that be a kitchen hand like Ramos, your experience, or whether that's, you know, maybe a kitchen hand wasn't your goal. You didn't want to become a kitchen hand, but it's starting somewhere and developing a skill set which enables you to follow through with your career path. So thank you both so much for coming and sharing your experiences today with the filming and being part of the project, your own work and experiences. It's been really great for you to share this with the community. So thank you.
And I'd like to remind everybody that the videos that we've just seen this evening, you can actually access on our website. We'll be providing the link in the Facebook uh, chat or on the Facebook page as well. So next up on our agenda, we will be passing it back to Nikki. So thank you both, thanks all. Thanks so much, Nick, for that wonderful facilitation. And I'd also like to extend a warm thank you to Natasha and Ramos for joining us today. Uh, what an incredible project to be a part of, really quite groundbreaking in changing people's perceptions uh, and also to the whole team behind the scenes that were involved in creating the campaigns, as Ramis said, the, you know, the, the creativity and all the work that goes into putting those ads together. It's quite a big team effort. But uh, we also thank you, Natasha and Ramis, for taking the time to join us today to explain the process, but also to talk about your personal experiences, because I think that's what's really meaningful. And I really enjoyed hearing about uh, your concepts of having a great attitude and showing people what's possible. Uh, that's really important, I think, for um, everybody to hear that because, you know, attitude for all of us is everything. And I have no doubt that this campaign will open people's minds and change people's attitudes about the possibilities of employing deaf staff and opening up opportunities for including people in their teams. So thank you very much for joining us. And I just a reminder that if you are wanting support uh, with getting employment, that we have services available here at Expression Australia. So please get in contact with our team and equally keep an eye out on our job posts uh, because we absolutely have a vision of employing more deaf staff into the future. Now I'll refocus on to some of the other wonderful projects that our team and the community have been working on. In partnership with the Telstra Foundation, we've developed an app called Auslan Anywhere. And it's a platform for you creators um, and Auslan users to develop some content, content so that uh, families and children uh, can learn Auslan. So if you're an Auslan user, um, this is a fantastic opportunity to get involved and give back to young deaf children by ensuring they have the opportunity to grow up in a household that learns and supports them with Auslan. We are looking for creators to create content. And if you think this is something you're interested in being involved in or just want to know more, we'd really like to hear from you um, on our email, admin at auslananywhere.com.au. And you can go on our, the website, Auslan Anywhere, and become a creator or become a learner. Uh, really an um, important uh, initiative. And with thanks to Telstra Foundation for putting several hundred thousand dollars uh, behind this. Um, in fact, um, we're going to officially launch it at our up and coming next community event, which is on Saturday, the 17th of April at 1 p.m. at the Melbourne Museum. The Expression Australia Family Day, everybody is welcome and we so want you to join us. But please uh, register and make sure you purchase your tickets to attend the museum. Again, on our website, expression.com.au forward slash events forward slash family day. Um, and uh, that those details will be available in the Facebook um, link. What you will experience on the day is Auslan tours, story time, pop-up cl classes, and a sign choir workshop. Um, all activities are going to be bilingual in Auslan and English, led by deaf tutors and presenters um, and interpreters. Um, we'll also be launching the app, as I said, um, Auslan Anywhere on this day. So I do hope to meet you in person at this event. And uh, yeah, please sign up soon so that uh, we can make sure that we can accommodate everybody's needs. And the last uh, project I wanted to talk to you is about our ReConnect program. This is actually a Victorian government program um, funded under the Department of Education, and it's aimed at supporting deaf, 
hard of hearing and LGBTIQA plus people living in Victoria who are perhaps feeling a little disconnected from their community. This program encourages and supports participants back into education and skill development. So in, in line with our theme tonight around employment, we're try, hoping that this program um, will help people re-engage into a community, help them prepare for work, and also look at what skills um, and needs that they may ha have uh, that we may be able to support them with. The program's available for people 17 years of age through to 64 years of age without work or study for the last six months or longer. So there are a few criteria. Um, and it's also for people who are impacted by youth justice orders and asylum seekers. So quite a broad range of uh, people who are needing support. And if you need more information, please contact our team again via our website. And of course, make sure that you keep tuned in to our very new website a fully accessible um, website with over 200 Auslan videos and um, that you can pose questions in Auslan or English and we have a um, live chat function if you want to make comments. So please be sure to um, have a, a full look over our website because there's lots of ongoing exciting news and current events. Now I'd like to hand back to Livy, uh, who, who will be um, doing some rapid fire questions and answers with me. Um, so over and welcome back Livy and over to you to ask me some questions. Thank you. Yeah, and I'd just like to remind everybody who's tuning in this evening and watching us tonight that you can ask questions via posting a comment in the Facebook live chat or if you've joined us with Zoom this evening, you can pose your questions and you can also come on screen. You can press a comment in the Q&A or in the chat as well on Zoom. So I have a few questions I was really wanting to ask Nikki tonight. So the first one, with your time at Expression Australia in your CEO role, what has your experience been like? Can you inform us in the community of your experience thus far? Olivia, my experience firstly has been very positive. As I said in my opening, I've had a really warm welcome from the community. It has been an incredibly busy time as well, uh, given what's been happening with COVID around Australia, us recovering our services, uh, having people back into the office. And I'm pleased to say that on the 10th of April, we've got our very first community event on site in our office. So that's really exciting. But my experience has been one of learning, uh, uh, getting to know people, meeting with not only community members, uh, community groups, but government, uh, businesses, corporates, sporting organisations, to talk to them about the work that Expression Australia do, but also uh, to be there as an advocate on behalf of the deaf community. So overall, my experience has been very uh, positive, very happy, um, and I'm really excited about some of the things that we're going to do in 2021 and 2022 and beyond. That sounds good. And you've only been at Expression for four months, am I right? So it looks like you've been learning a lot about the deaf culture and the language and what that's been like. So can you inform us a little bit more about that journey? Yes, uh, Libby, prior to starting in Expression Australia, uh, so I started on the 16th of November and for about five weeks prior to starting, I was having um, one-on-ones with a number of people at Expression Australia and also outside of Expression Australia, who were um, updating me on the history, uh, on the culture, uh, improving and uh, increasing and strengthening my understanding of the deaf community. 
And I also did start some Auslan lessons prior to my commencement on November the 16th. And I'm continuing those lessons every week with the help of Steph Linda and Tony Tran, and as well as um, office staff. Uh, we are um, often practicing. Um, I'm trying to learn new sign um, signs every week and adding to my knowledge. But I'm not there yet, and I'm looking forward to improving and improving and, and being better at uh, Auslan. But I, I've done quite a bit of work with various individuals and also obviously um, reading. And again, I thank everyone for their generous time in helping me um, come up to speed with. Uh, a bicultural and a bilingual community. Yeah, wow. And do you know, let's not forget that coronavirus has also hit us in that time. So yes, there's lots of one-on-one -on -one opportunity that you've had, but not a lot to get that full immersion just yet. So hopefully with COVID looking like um, the, the risks are lessening, and we'll be able to attend things face to face, you'll have more opportunity to interact with people and continue your learning. So we'll move on to the next question. Speaking of coronavirus, in fact, the next question is uh, linking in with coronavirus there. So obviously, there's been a huge impact to the community and a huge impact to Expression Australia as an organisation. So can you give us a little bit more of an understanding on what that impact is? Yes, uh, like every organisation in Australia and around the world, Expression Australia has been impacted by COVID. Um, but the thing for us that's the biggest challenge is we exist to provide support and service to our community. And during uh, COVID, all of our staff had to move to work from home and we couldn't have face-to-face -face meetings with clients. Uh, and and face-to-face -face, uh, support for clients to go to appointments. So for us, that was incredibly disappointing because we felt like in many ways we were letting our community down. Uh, I'm pleased to say that um, while there was a temporary uh, stop to our services, our staff have worked so hard to do what they could to support the community during that time and anything we could do remotely uh, we were doing. Now that COVID seems to have subsided a little bit, we have started to recover our services and we're now transitioning away from working from home to being back in the office much more often. I announced last week that we recently had a restructure. There are a number of people in our organisation who have taken a voluntary redundancy and Several of them are starting to leave now um, through to the middle of April. And we've had to take this step just like every other organisation due to some financial losses uh, to manage our organisation to be strong and sustainable into the future. We are undergoing a new strategic plan and um, I'm looking forward to sharing that with you uh, in the coming months. And uh, we will look to rebuild our organisation in the second half of this year. But as far as services go, we don't anticipate any interruption to services as a result of our staff taking a voluntary redundancy and our restructure. But it is a time of adjustment and we, of course, welcome your feedback. And I, sorry. I should add that we, as a part of this, we are looking to have more face-to-face -face community events and that's what everybody's really excited about. Yeah, and we do have community events coming up shortly, I believe, in the Melbourne Museum. So that's, you know, really exciting. And I think it's particularly exciting for you because it'll be your first big community event and hopefully it won't be too long in between the next one to follow. So we'll move on to the next question. So as a CEO, what vision do you have for Expression Australia? I hope that I can build and strengthen on the work that everybody before me has done. So I want to acknowledge that there have been many people in this organisation and within the community 
who have uh, made Expression Australia what it is today. We will continue our focus on the deaf and hard of hearing community. And I see into the, into the future that we will be a stronger organisation being engaged in uh, deeper ways and um, listening to the needs of our community to shape what activities, what funding we may seek, what grants we may apply for in order to meet the needs of our community. When I hear from stories like Natasha and Ramos today and many other um, deaf young people, I wanna make sure that our organization is truly engaged and co-designing, co-working, collaborating to make sure that our organization remains relevant, uh, in touch, and is always looking to evolve into something that the community needs, wants for their support into the future. So that's why I'm, I'm really calling on people to engage with us um, when, we, when we need community consultations, but also please to interact, come to the events, uh, because that's the way in which we can make contact and have you involved in some of our decisions into the future particularly when it comes to building our deaf space at the Melbourne Polytechnic Centre in Collingwood, which is planned um, for a move in about two years time. I need our community to be involved in shaping what that looks like. And I'm really excited to be working with you about creating a space that we hope will be cutting edge and world leading. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, really exciting to have that deaf space coming into our future, you know, somewhere that we've really been needing for quite some time to, so to have that on the horizon, I think is really fantastic. So our last question is uh, regarding any of the projects or programs that are happening at, at Expression Australia or will be coming soon. Is there one in particular you're most excited about or looking forward to? Um, oh gosh, there's so many. Uh, we're currently talking um, with a number of organisations about opening access within their organisations. So I'm probably um, most excited about the expertise that our team has here, our deaf staff, our video productions, our interpreters, our translators coming together to ensure that big corporations and big sporting organisations start to think about how they can make their games, their operations, their information more accessible to this community. I'm most excited about the fact that people want to do that. Uh, I think there's great awareness about inclusion and access and that um, we can talk to these organisations to bring our team together to see that what we can do to open up and reduce the barriers for participation in big corporations and big sporting organisations. That makes me excited. Oh yeah, that sounds fantastic. So now I'd like to ask everybody who's tuning in this evening if they have any questions. I know nothing has come through at the moment, but I'd just like to remind everybody that you can direct a question to Nikki about Expression Australia and the organisation. You can also ask questions to Ramis and Natasha regarding their experience and involvement with the I Am Deaf project and the filming. So you can ask questions to any of the people who have shown uh, and expressed their work here tonight. And if you think of any questions later, you can also access our website. We also have a chat function if you prefer to type your questions in for this evening. And if you prefer to film yourself, you can come on screen. If you'd like to provide feedback, you can also do so uh, via video and in Auslan to our website. So now I might just wait for a short moment, maybe one or two minutes, just to see if anything comes through regarding questions for this evening. And if nothing comes through, we may put a close to this evening. Just while we're waiting, I like to say as well that it was really lovely to see 
the conversation evolve regarding different projects that are happening. And even though we've been struggling through a pandemic and with coronavirus as it occurred last year and has continued on this year, it's really nice to see uh, positive things occurring in the community, resources being made, projects taking off, uh, people learning our culture and learning Auslan as well. It's very positive to see. I'd like to ask Sam Martin if he's seen any questions come through on any of our channels that need to be posed in the space. Looks like nothing has come through. So with that in mind, we might wrap things up for this evening. So this segment of what's on at Expression Australia, we've reflected on a few things that have already been achieved. And we've talked a little bit to the future and what we can see come our way shortly. And this won't be a once off event. We're hoping to keep the community engaged and involved with uh, regular updates on what's happening in the space. So we hope that with this in mind, and as this continues to be provided, that people can continue to ask questions to us as well and give us their feedback. You can ask your questions via Zoom and via Facebook during the event, and you can pose those questions anytime after the event. So I know it's Easter this weekend as well. So I hope everybody enjoys a long weekend and enjoys a nice holiday. And thank you to those who've joined us this evening on Zoom. Could everybody please turn your cameras on who is able to, to say goodbye for this evening? Thanks all. I just wanna say a big thanks to you, Livy, for hosting today and um, that I also wish everybody a lovely break over the Easter break, whether you celebrate or not, um, a wonderful safe time with your families and uh, big thanks to the team who've organised this evening and it's been my pleasure to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Thanks, everybody. Great. Thanks, everyone. See you. Bye-bye.